We are in week five of the MOOC, Managing Responsibly, Practicing Sustainability, Responsibility and Ethics. So this week is all about the practicing. We're here at ITV, which is one of uh, the biggest commercial broadcasters worldwide. And we're going to go in there and try to find out how people actually do sustainability, responsibility and ethics. My name is Ian Jones. I'm the director of um, workplace services and estates for ITV, which is basically facilities management and property. My job is to implement the sustainability strategy that ITV comes up with. So numbers of people give me their ideas and the things that they want us to do and I actually implement this with my team. In order to achieve this what we have to do is to you have to have a little bit of uh, awareness of cost and benefit because you'll be asked to do many many different things. You have to pick the ideas with the biggest wins for the company. ITV procure green energy so all of the energy we use everywhere is um, green tariff energy. Um, we took that decision a few years ago, it cost the company a little bit more, but we thought that was absolutely the right thing to be doing for the environment. I think one of the most important things that you can do is to agree what temperature you should have in your office, because you always get too hot, too cold. Our temperature is 23 degrees, and we say to people, if it's 23 degrees and you're too cold, you need to put a cardigan on. Or if it's 23 degrees and you're too hot, you need to take something off. Um, within reason, of course. There is proactive management, there is reactive management, but what we have at ITV is active management. So the proactive management is where you're looking forward your energy use um, and trying to plan your week through your BMS as to exactly what might happen. The reactive bit is putting right what's gone wrong, but the active bit is actually changing things as they're happening. So the weather forecast, and here's a good example of it in London today, they said it was going to be pouring down all day. In actual fact, it's not been a bad day at all. And the temperatures outside are different from those that we were expecting. So the active management bit is genuinely changing the temperature controls that you've got as the weather changes outside. Because people feel differently when they're coming from a cold day as they do for a hot day, and you end up burning energy, more energy than you need to. But at ITV, we do like to give people choice. So not in this building, because this building's 45 years old and we haven't got the controls to do it, but in our newer buildings, we still put controls inside meeting rooms and offices where the people who are occupying them can actually control them. So there are light switches with dimmers on them, and there are heating controls that allow them a good range, not just plus or minus one or two degrees, but four or five degree range that they can change the temperatures in those rooms. So if you had a meeting room like we've got today with 12 people or space for 12 people, it would get hotter a lot quicker than a room with only two people in it of this size. Um, so it allows them to change those temperatures so that they are comfortable themselves. So this does burn a little bit more energy, but keeps the people happy and happy people are productive people. Finally, recycling. So we not only recycle here and we split our waste into wet and dry, or it's actually dry and residual waste, um, but our food waste, it's all composted. So we collect that separately um, and that's composted off site as well. So we've got very, very little um, goes to any kind of landfill. In actual fact, most of our residual waste goes to a, uh, an incinerator, which is just down the road from where we are. So uh, that benefits the environment again. My name is Maria Nibbs and I'm an executive producer here at ITV Studios. I work in production. Um, across Tech Santa, which is an annual fundraising campaign um, dealing with various charities, fundraising um, and reaching out to our audiences to make them aware of, of the good causes that we do and how they can engage in that and, and donate and fundraise. What we do is we reach out to our audience. The, the great platform with ITV is that we have such many, many, many loved brands, um, Coronation Street, Downton, um, this morning, GMB, you know, some great daytime shows, primetime shows. So we use those as platforms to reach out to our viewers and engage them into Tech Santa and, and they will then learn from there and they will raise awareness of the charities that we're working with. So in 2015, we worked with Macmillan Cancer Support, Make-A-Wish UK and Save the Children. What we did was we, we engaged all of our brands and all of our ITV talent um, we had Amanda Holden, Simon Cowell, Anton Deck, everyone came on board and they did their bit. And what we asked them to do in 2015 was we asked our viewers and our ITV family to do their bit in a Christmas nip. And we kicked that off at the beginning of December with Philip Schofield in his Christmas jumpers. And he appeared across the ITV network on the 1st of December wearing a different jumper in every single programme. So he kicked off on GMB where he appeared coming out of number 10 wearing his Christmas jumper 
And then throughout the day, he was on Jeremy Kyle handing over a lie detector. Um, he ended up on the 10 o'clock news at the end of the evening. And it was a great way for the viewers just to get on board and understand what Tech Santa was. Um, we had a big Christmas jumper day campaign on the 18th of December. It just engages viewers. Their interest then is there and we hold them and then they then get to learn about our charities and what, what our charities do and the good causes they have. And then we encourage people to then donate money, which is our main goal. And then this year we broke all of our records and we raised 11, and a staggering 11 million pounds um, for the three charities. And we had a three hour live show on the 18th of December. And again, we showed all of our brands. Coronation Street did a fantastic sketch with Sir Richard Branson. And we had the DeLorean flying up the cobbles, um, things like that, that, that we work with all these brilliant brands. Uh, we work on uh, the script, like from the concept of what the idea is, writing the script, booking the talent that are gonna be involved. Um, and then we're there for the filming and then editing and, and then we deliver it on the night. So you really, it really is a way to work across the whole of ITV, bring everyone on board, and everyone loves it and engages in it and, and wants to do their bit, and, and that's what I think is really important. The skills you need is to be able to talk to people, work with people. Um, as an executive producer, you've got to be able to manage time, talent, um, people, um, and it's, it's, it's an enjoyable and rewarding job. My name is Katie Blaisby. I'm the Diversity and Inclusion Manager here at ITV. My background is primarily in HR and I've been with the corporate responsibility team for about six months now. What's the most important uh, skill in my job? Being able to work with people, understand what the needs of the business are and how to meet those needs with my knowledge and experience. At ITV we want both our on-screen and off-screen to reflect modern Britain. So a lot of the work that I do is working with the business to understand how we can ac accomplish that. So whether that's looking at what's actually physically appearing on screen or whether it's to do with our editorial content. Off screen, that's all about how diverse our workforce is. Have we got the right tools in the right place for the right people to really drive a culture and diversity and inclusion in the business. Around access services, that's all to do with how people access our content. So whether that be when it's broadcast with signing, audio description, subtitling, or whether it's on our ITV hub, we're expecting a lot of work and a focus around that in the next few months with the government's decision pending on whether there should be Ofcom quotas for online content as well. At ITV, the main focus of my role here is to support the business's people commitments under our ITV responsibility strategy. So that falls into four different sections. The first is inclusive programming. So that is really looking at how we reflect modern Britain on screen and in our editorial content. The social partnership, which was launched back in 2014, was a big step forward for us in terms of partnering with our commissions and our studio side of the business to really achieve and drive that change. The second is inclusive workforce, so that is looking how we make sure that our workforce reflects modern Britain as well. So making sure that everything we do is relevant and appropriate. The third is all about inclusive culture, so my role in that is really making sure that we embed diversity and inclusion fully within the business, so it's not reliant on our department or one single person to drive that change, it's owned within the business and managed every single day in what we're doing. We have some great internal networks, we have our ITV Pride network, we have the ITV ambassadors, so these are really unique tools that we have to be able to engage with our colleagues direct, help communicate with them about what's important with our ITV responsibility strategy and make sure that we can help drive that change with their support within the business. Our fourth commitment is inclusive access to programmes and services. So we do a lot of work around our supply chain, making sure that we have inclusive standards and making sure that our content is accessible to everyone. We continue to exceed our quotas set by our regulatory body regarding signing, audio description and subtitling. And we also partner with a various number of different external organisations to drive this agenda forward, whether it's the RNIB or Action on Hearing Loss as well. I'm Matt Scarf, I'm uh, Director of ITV Creative and the Events Team here at ITV and I also chair the ITV Pride Network Group uh, for LGBT colleagues. Before I started at ITV and in my first, uh, my first role, my first job, uh, I trained as a journalist and worked for a radio station in Hong Kong uh, where I learned everything about broadcast journalism. But not being satisfied, always wanting to move on to the next big thing, jumped into the world of television and advertising uh, and that's where I've been ever since. I'm quite fortunate in uh, the position I hold at ITV in that I can escalate things that really matter to the LGBT workforce. Um, 
and you know whether that is uh, taking part in a parade in central London or Manchester or Leeds to how we're making LGBT people really stand out in the workplace it can be simple anything from a lanyard around, uh, around a neck to a, a mug saying that they're pr proud and and they're part of ITV pride. Um, being able to talk to the senior leadership team and to the board members as well is really important and I think the one thing that I say that uh, that some organisations may not have is that ability to escalate very quickly and rapidly to, to the board level to make things happen. ITV is a global company and you know small things can, can increase in a big way if you have the right backing and right support so that's the one thing I sort of work quite hard at is trying to make uh, our message go a lot further than just a, a London-centric thing. ITV Pride is a network group um, for colleagues uh, across the company, both in the UK and internationally. And it started in about 2012, and it was the first and only network group currently at ITV. And what I mean by network group is it's, it's, it's a, a way of pulling people together from all over uh, at the business at, at any level and LGBT is, is what we're representing but actually we're looking for straight allies as well that can really sort of drive the cause and make positive change uh, and, and make inclusivity and diversity. Every, it's everything we do at ITV and it shouldn't just be in front of the screen, you know, it needs to be behind it as well. The younger generations don't necessarily identify themselves as LGB or T, they may do, sometimes they they just want to be part of it yeah. without saying I am lesbian, yeah. I am gay yeah. and that is absolutely fine yeah. you know I think it's, it's, it's a tolerance and it's something yeah. that is, is in the DNA of ITV yeah. to support each other as, as colleagues. The Pride group has been successful over the last couple of years in not only promoting itself but also working with other organisations like the BBC, Channel 4, Sky, UK TV uh, where we get together as part of Intermedia UK uh, and which ITV is the current chair uh, and, and we make sure that organisations, network groups like ITV Pride can benefit from the things and the learnings that we've picked up in our time uh, since that 2012 start. I think the other thing we are able to do as part of ITV Pride is uh, support the editorial team specifically uh, around Good Morning Britain and um, Loose Women around topics that might not be uh, things that they're experts in but where we've got some background information or we can use our contacts at Stonewall to really help drive the right editorial agenda. Um, specifically around trans, uh, which is increasingly becoming more and more important to companies like ITV to make sure that the trans community is represented in the right way. So we can offer that support. Uh, we're in the building and we're based all over the company, um, but uh, it, offer, it offers a really good uh, network for those editorial teams uh, across ITV. My name's Julia Stevenson. I work as a lawyer at ITV and I help to run an initiative that's come out of the legal team called the Legal Social Mobility Programme. One thing I would say you need to have in order to help volunteering and doing initiatives such as this is good time management skills. The Legal Social Mobility Programme is an initiative that was born out of ITV in conjunction with some of its partner law firms and it started in 2013. The scheme helps to provide work experience and work skills um, for students who come from underprivileged backgrounds. Um, so our law firms that we work with are committed to providing one week of legal work experience for students who ordinarily wouldn't have the opportunity to do so. A lot of city law firms are committed to increasing diversity and helping to make sure that they get a wider pool of applicants applying to um, practice law. One of the things that in-house legal teams like, would like to participate in is helping to assist with that agenda. Um, but often in-house teams don't have the resources to offer a week's work experience. So LSMP was born out of an idea to allow the students to experience a week of work experience within a typical law firm environment, but then also see that there are other options in-house in, within commercial organisations. The students spend a week in a law firm and then the second week they visit a different commercial organisation every day. So there are various um, commercial organisations that we've 
managed to get on board and partnered up on the initiative. So my job is to help to coordinate the programme and also to make sure that the commercial partners and the law firms are offering a wide variety of opportunities for the students. So it's not just about the students coming in and shadowing someone, they're actually getting key skills that they can then use for their personal statements when they're applying for university. They've got really good blue chip companies on their CV, so it helps them to stand out and also gives them skills that they can use, not just at university, but beyond within their career. So they do a day at a sporting um, organisation. So in London, they go to the Harlequins Rugby Club and they get some coaching from sports coaches on how to build their resilience, how to work with team, within a team. They also learn how to network, negotiation skills, presentation skills. And what we found is that the students come in the first week and they're all very shy and they, you know, a lot of them haven't had any access to companies such as the ones that they, they will be visiting during the programme. And by the end of the two weeks, they're so much more confident. They're, you know, willing to put their hand up and, you know, give their ideas and challenge people and walk into a room and they're able to network with um, you know professionals and adults quote unquote the feedback that we've had from the students has been that they've really really appreciated benef benefited from the program um, and one of the important things that we do also is to make sure that it's not just a two-week shot in the arm we actually provide some legacy um, opportunities so the students are able to sign up to a LinkedIn group, we're able to offer advice when they're going to universities for their interviews, we can do mock interviews, we can help them with their personal statements and provide them with real kind of um, access to professionals that can help to assist them and coach them and guide them through the whole process. And it, you know, it's been amazing to be involved with that and being able to kind of utilise my skills as a lawyer um, with the opportunity to help students on, you know, who are just starting on that journey.